Hello gorgeous Pisces and welcome to July 2019. Quite the powerful alchemical time for you in the water family. All the water signs are getting some big hits when it comes to vision and life purpose and life path because of that North Node and Cancer energy that we have been working with. And the fact that the eclipses are now happening in Cancer, a fellow water sign. So July, I will tell you right now, is one of my favorite types of months. I have to say that I've learned to really enjoy this type of month. We have eclipse season and we have a Mercury retrograde and we have a lot of oppositions going on in the sky between uh, energies in Cancer and energies in Capricorn, which is the North and South node polarities. And so when we hit into eclipse season, I'm sure you, many of you are well aware, we are in a time, we are in a little space where we are clearing away, where we are resetting, where we are taking out anything from our lives that's no longer working and we're getting huge hits of downloads. Eclipses tend to bring us very crisp information in a very a solid <laughs> chunk uh, right there, right then. And so July definitely has that information bringing energy to it, um, which can be intense. But here's the thing I wanna say before we even get into your note, Pisces. Take your time this month. It is one of those months, and we have a few of these every year, where it's only going to fully make sense at the end of the month, maybe not even until August. Um, what information comes in and how it plays out. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't assume too much about other people's processes because we're all going through these eclipses. We're all having recalibration. We're all asking big questions. So this is a really important time to step back from judgment or from conclusion taking in this time, right? So for you guys, you know, your social and relationship worlds and your creative worlds are getting a bit of a shakeup with these eclipses, especially if you're a Pisces rising, you're going to be having an eclipse first in your fifth house and then another eclipse in your 11th house. So our first eclipse is the new moon in Cancer. It's a total solar eclipse. will only be visible in a tiny portion of the world, uh, but we're going to be getting that huge reset right and that is in a fellow water sign with you i'm going to start shuffling here we have nine of swords okay um starting off with some overthinking right um and then and so that's going to feel i think that's going to feel quite powerful for you pisces uh and then we have uh and the uh, the other eclipse is happening in capricorn on july 16th it's a full moon in capricorn four of cups yep there's some reflection going on here you guys there's some reflection, there's some slowing down, there's some looking in. And that July 16th full moon in Capricorn is going to be a partial lunar eclipse. Uh, once again, we're working with the north node of Cancer and the south node of Capricorn. And, you know, this is a potent time <laughs> for the south node, north node conversation because of how much energy is in the south node uh, of placement of Capricorn right now. We have Saturn and Pluto there hanging out with the South Node. So we are really working with our self-discipline and what that looks like and where we need to ease up on that, where we need to find compassion and grace for ourselves when it comes to the way we self-discipline and the way that we push ourselves, right? And so we're learning how to heal. And that's the other thing about cancer season as a whole. This is a time of deep nurturing healing. It's about a time of self-mothering. It's about a time of healing our, our lineage even, and the way that we commune with our ancestors, death. Fellow water sign Scorpio showing up here. Okay, Pisces. There's a lot of intense energy here. I think you can agree as I'm pulling these cards for you. And here's the thing, we have these big eclipses happening in um, relatively symbiotic energies for you. You know, Cancer and Capricorn are energies that flow with you quite well. Wheel of Fortune, that's been showing up a lot. Something else fell down here, Queen of Swords, okay? And that's actually the other note I wanted to bring up for you guys this month. So you have these big, big downloads when it comes to where you're needing to kind of maybe let go of an old vision of your creative process or your community, your friendship, friendships and relationships, um, or your sense of romance, all of those things could be getting kind of cleaned up. But the other really important thing for you guys to keep in mind is, yeah, there's going to be energies that no longer serve you that you'll be ready to release. But there's also 
this is an important month for you all to look at boundaries and to look at how you show up or don't show up to things and where you need to set healthy boundaries for yourself when it comes to that queen of pentacles. And these queens now I'm seeing have, have an understanding of boundaries. So we'll be talking through what those queens are going to be doing for and with you and the modality with which you're going to be doing the work of working through this deep healing time and these eclipses. Now we have a gift of Mercury retrograde beginning in the middle of these eclipses and I really do think it is a gift um, if you're willing to roll with it because so the Mercury retrograde begins on July 9th and it's actually in Leo which is your sixth house of you know your body your routine the way you serve in the world um, and it's going to take 10 days and then on July 19th it's going to go back into Cancer back into your fifth house energy here of creativity and then retrograde until July 30th, and then it will go direct in Cancer again. And that Mercury retrograde is beginning smack dab in the middle of these two eclipses. Now Mercury retrograde slows us down. It makes it a little harder to communicate. It makes it a little harder to move at that quick, fast messenger rate that a lot of us like to move at. But I think that's a good thing because Three of Swords, don't worry you guys, don't worry. Three of Swords has a very specific meaning in my world and we need to, we'll, we'll talk through it. Um, and temperance. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna pull one more for you guys, but we need, these eclipses are going to be bringing huge amounts of energy. The Capricorn cancer axis, when we have eclipses, I mean, the moon rules cancer. Moon is home of cancer. We're having this big total solar eclipse in cancer right at the beginning of this month. We are getting huge amounts of information in July. We need to slow down. We need to not be in messenger, mercurial, go, 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 talk, move pieces around, but we need to pull back this month and sit and listen, especially before we hit into Leo season on July 23rd. During Cancer season, this is not a time to jump to conclusions. Like I said, it's not a time to to judge or to push. It's a time to listen. It's a time to reset page of cups. Okay. I like that ending to our cards here because Pisces, you guys have a big learning curve this month. I, even as I look at the cards, I'm like, okay, we're going to be doing some things here. <laughs> we're going to be working on some things here with these eclipses and with the energy here and with this slow down healing energy that we need. Because here's what's interesting, I say slow down and it kind of is, you know, cancer season brings us internal a little bit more, it works through some of our deeper, deeper embodiment things and our deeper emotional truths, gets us really close to source, really gets us into that flow of all our one. Um, but it's also a very accelerated learning track, right? These, these eclipses are going to be very fast paced learning modules, so to speak. And so when we're working with that kind of speed and efficiency of information, it brings things up very quickly. And that's part of the reason that I'm seeing these a little, these a little bit more intensive revolution cards for Pisces, because it's going to bring things up very quickly for you that you can just slough off. But you know, riding those waves is going to be really important for you. Listening to the information is going to be really important to you. I would say Pisces specifically for you as I'm looking at these energies, this is a month where I would try not to numb out too much. I know that it can be really tempting during these times of big waves just to like take a step back and numb out with stuff. But if you listen to the information that's coming in, it will be a lot less painful actually. And it will be a very rewarding month emotionally. And in your evolution, you will come out with a lot more oomph in your life. So let's just look through this. So nine of swords and four of cups. I think this cancer new moon eclipse is going to hit you guys in a pretty, in a place that maybe you've put away in a drawer for a little while, you know, maybe, maybe an experience or a disappointment or an emotional, uh, thing that's happened that you kind of just put in a drawer and didn't want to have to think about, but that has been kind of maybe lurking or haunting with you a little bit. Something that maybe make, makes you nervous or makes you sad or makes you feel that you don't really understand why certain things play out the way they do and you just haven't wanted to look at it. This Nine of Swords, Four of Cups, I think this new moon in Cancer is going to be bringing up some of this 
this thought. And it doesn't just have to be with relationships. It can also be with a project that you loved or a, a dream that you had that maybe played out in a different way than you expected. And it's coming up. And it's coming up and it's forcing you to sit very uncomfortably with those places where you feel lack, where you feel undeserving, where you feel fear that there won't be more. Fear that there won't be more opportunities, more paths opening up to you, right? But here's the thing. I've realized that when we have grief come up, when we have those internal reflections come up in us where we feel some of that lack and we feel some of that sense of loss or sense of disappointment or thinking about something that has left our fold, we're closest to God. We're closest to source. If we're listening, we can really hear what's next. So you're being asked to do that and you're being held in this space, Pisces, to do such a thing. Because here's the deal. You've got two of the most revolutionary cards right after that holding space, right? And here's what you're doing kind of in between these two eclipses and during the first two weeks of this month when we are having this eclipse action through July 16th and into the 17th, you know, we are going to be doing some really deep and profound things. And you specifically, Pisces, are one of the ones where I'm seeing you are really clearing something out that's been holding and haunting you and you've got to get close to source like that so that you can free yourself. And that's what death and wheel of fortune is about. These cards are transformational revolutionizers. They want you to see the dawn and the new day. They do not want you to hold on to the past. They do not want you to hold on to something that no longer serves. They will sweep it away. And for a lot of you, I don't feel like this is something that will be necessarily a current thing that, that you're worried about keeping in your life right now. Maybe for some of you, that's true. A lot of you, I think this is something that you've known you've wanted to release or let go of most of this year, if not longer. It's something that you have wanted to clear out of your energy field and out of your conscious thoughts for quite some time. <clears throat> Because you know that you are meant for something different. You know you are meant for something more and you're kind of tired of having to replay where you succeeded or where you failed or where you feel you should have done more or less or what have you. Now, death and wheel of fortune are big players. This is big energy. This is the kind of stuff that comes in and clears something out of your way. So once again, with these eclipses, be patient with yourself. You know, if big news comes in or big revelation comes in, give yourself time to let it work through you. You don't have to know everything about the next stage of your life. You don't need to know everything about what this is going to change in your life and how your life's going to look in a year now that you know that this shift has occurred. You just need to know that you're freed and that your energy cycle is shifting. And this is what eclipses do. You know, this is really the type of work that eclipses do. I think death and the wheel of fortune is a very um, <clears throat> appropriate combo for eclipse season because eclipses are actually known as malefic. They blot out the light, right? So like we have benefic and malefic in astrology and eclipses have a little bit of this dark edge to them because they're, they're taking us into the dark to sit with anything we're uncomfortable with and clear it out. So we're communing with a really powerful energy and it's, and it is for our greatest good. It is for our higher good, but collectively we're experiencing a shift out. Now for you, this has to do with you stepping into some true power and some true empowerment. And Pisces, this is no longer a time for you to feel that you have been, that you have to be in hurtful scenarios, right? And that's where these next Queens come in and even the three of swords. The Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles are two of my favorite energies that we can ever work with. Because both of these entities, these energies, understand centeredness. They understand centeredness. The Queen of Swords, the Boundary Queen. She's going to say what she needs in order for something to work for her. She's also going to call it if something is hurtful to her or if it's not working for her, right? Now, of course, this is not a month to 
run your mouth <laughs> because the information, nothing's clear, right? So this may not be the time where you want to like have it out with every single person you know. However, this is an amazing time to figure out where it is that maybe you're over giving, maybe you're over caring, maybe you are spending energy over and over again that's exhausting you. It's making you feel less than, it's making you feel a sense of scarcity or exhaustion. And that's what these queens are reminding me here. Inherently, they're telling me that Pisces, you have to get back into this place of clearly stating what you're willing to give, where you're willing to give it, and also nurturing yourself. We are in cancer season. This is an energy of nurturing and healing. And even though the Queen of Pentacles isn't, isn't a water queen, she is a self, she's a valuing and nurturing and mothering queen. She understands abundance in the sense of it is something that we cultivate from the inside out, that bonfire that we cultivate here in our solar plexus, self-confidence up and out. And then the Queen of Swords understands that how we use our throat chakra is a result of us having a sense of core, having a sense of heart. So this is about also an alignment for you um, between your heart, solar plexus chakra, and your throat chakra. And those being able to have a dialogue that allows you to speak what is true for you and not to suppress it and push it down. Not to put yourself in positions that make you feel poor or exhausted energy-wise. Emotion wise, because three of swords is often how we kind of self harm emotionally, how we self harm in our thoughts and our scenarios, right? Three of swords is sometimes um, in pop tarot is known as like this three party situation, and I'm just so over that interpretation of this card because it's too simplistic. It doesn't really cover what the three of swords is really about, which is when we put ourselves over and over again into scenarios, this can look like anything from showing up in an office environment that's really like taxing to showing up to relationships that hurt us. We over and over again experience the pain that comes with the thoughts that that establishes and with the, the, the things that we almost take for granted, like that has to be life. And so this is coming up for you. Once again, these eclipses very quickly bring up where we are feeling <laughs> less than, where we're feeling inadequate, where we are feeling we need to shift something out. And for you guys, it's really hitting to the core of something very specific that's been holding you back for a little while. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, if you're willing to ride this wave and you are willing to listen into this information and you are willing to let the information process through you, Good things are coming. You have a lot of beautiful energy here. You have a revolution going on this month. There is no doubt that you are in a very pivotal point in your year. Excuse me. And this, <laughs> this is meant to do this so that you can get clear into this uh, temperance and page of cups energy. These are energies of peace and dynamics that are about balance. You know, temperance is yes, it's the Sagittarius card. So for those of you who have Sag on the mind, yes, that's nice, that's great. However, temperance is so much more than that because temperance is a beautiful angel, right? And this whole idea of living in the fire of life, living in the passion of life, that's amazing. But temperance understands that we wanna have a warming fire that we can put our hands to and enjoy, not to put ourselves in the fire and burn to death. That's where the tempering of the heat comes in. It's an understanding of the beautiful things in life will incinerate us if we don't understand how to temper them. And it's like, this is an alchemy card. So temperance is about the alchemical process of finding that balance. And so for you, this is a very important keystone in your conversation this month. It's extremely important for you to check in with temperance. Check in with that level of balance. You are getting recalibrated in such a profound way. And that is opening the door for you to get back into sync with the kind of offering ups, offerings up and connections that you want. The Page of Cups is a promise of new beginnings, a promise of emotional fulfillment, emotional happiness. One thing to keep in mind this month as well is we start in fifth house energy fellow water sign Cancer, we move into Leo. You know, I think July 1st, Mars moves into Leo. And then as the month progresses, we're moving more and more into Leo. There's a conversation going on between Leo and Cancer this month. And as we move into Leo, we're moving more and more into a space for you of how you're showing up in your daily life, 
how you're showing up to the things you want to be doing. And that's why I think the boundary setting with these eclipses is so important. If you can figure out what those boundaries are for you. And, and this is really just, it's a fun exercise in asking for what you want. Something that you write out. Just have fun writing it out during these eclipses. In Leo season and moving forward, you will be able to apply this information in ways that are really supportive of you uh, and supportive of you growing into a meaningful relationship. Now, this revelatory energy that I see for Pisces this month, it doesn't necessarily mean for all of you that people are going to be leaving your life or relationships are going to be ending. If you're in uh, powerful situations with work or love, where there is an investment there and it is something that you do want, you'll be noticing there's a revolution within that. There will be a cracking open of spaces where maybe there have been pain or things that have been ignored and a, and a release and an understanding. For some of you, yes, it will be about things leaving your life. Um, like I said, there's quite the range of experiences that can happen there, but I guarantee you that as I'm saying this, every one of you out there knows what what that is for you like you know it and some of you it's going to be uncomfortable to to think about what it is you know you have to shift over because it's like oh okay i gotta do this some of you are so ready you've been thinking about this for a while it's been coming up and some of you may actually be surprised by what comes up because like i said the first stage of this month for you is going to be feeling that something that you kind of tucked away is coming to the surface and you're feeling and you're recognizing it and you're wanting to address it. So, you know, ride these waves with grace. You're going to do an amazing job. This is a time of freedom and revolution. I'm sending you guys so much love. You can find me on Instagram at Sarah Verba. I would love to see you over there for energy updates. You can also find me on my website at sarahtarot.com. Um, I'll leave all of my info in the description box if you want to work with me. I'll be opening up sessions as the months progress right now. Uh, I don't have anything open, but I will be having fall sessions open soon. So you can go check that out very soon. Um, get in touch with me. All my info will be there. I'm wearing Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry. You can find her Etsy shop in the description box as well. She's one of my best friends and I love the work that she does in the world. I'm sending you guys so much love. I will see you for August readings for all the eclipse moon magic. So stay tuned for those. Those will be out very shortly. And I love you so much, Pisces.